Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Hey, did I ever tell you that you matter? I mean that you are matter. I mean you do matter, but you are matter. Everything is. Matter is anything that takes up weight and space, so you are matter. And that leads me to the next question. What is matter made up of? And here you may say, many tiny particles? And rightly so. But have you ever wondered what is the smallest, tiniest particle? Well, to explore this, we need to take a trip back in time to ancient Greece. Come on and dive in with me. This is Democritus. He was a philosopher who lived in Greece around 400 BC. And that is a long time ago. Back then, philosophers like him spent a lot of their time wondering and thinking about the world around them. Democritus wondered what would happen if he cut an apple into smaller and smaller pieces, over and over and over again, forever. Well, as he cut up the apple, he came to the realization that eventually the pieces would be so tiny that he wouldn't be able to divide it up any further. And he called these uncuttable pieces atomos, which means uncuttable in Greek. And so the atomic theory was born. Now, scientists continue to explore and experiment with this theory for thousands of years. A scientist named Jabir Ibhiyam developed filtering processes through boiling substances, collecting vapor, and then cooling the vapor. Now, this process broke substances down into its pure substances like water and sugar. And thousands of years later, Antoine Lavoisier and Marie Anne Pauls took Jabir Ibn Han's work a step further and found that pure substances could be broken down even further through chemical reactions. Water, for example, can be split into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. Lavoisier and Pauls tried through many experiments, but could never break those two gases down any further and concluded that these were elements. And let me explain here, an element is a substance that cannot be broken down by a chemical reaction and cannot be created by mixing other substances together. Elements are built by the same atoms. They are the building blocks of matter. Everything from the air we breathe to the organisms we share this world with is composed of them. Now with this in mind, scientists began to work to list as many elements as they could. And this concept of elements is what led to the periodic table of elements. A Russian scientist named Dmitry Mendeleev came up with the idea to organize the elements in one place. Oh, and what a mighty table he came up with. Take a look at it. It consists of 118 known elements, and each one has its own chemical symbol. One or two letters that proudly represent the element's name from its box on the periodic table. Looking at the table, some of the abbreviations are easy to figure out, like H for hydrogen or C for carbon. Others are trickier and date back to ancient times when Latin was the primary language. Let's look, for example, at, aha, uh -huh, here's one. The symbol for sodium is Na. Why? Because in Latin, the name for sodium is natrium. Uh, but don't worry, you'll see the full name of each element just below the symbol. Each element also has a decimal listed under each chemical symbol. This value is the element's atomic mass. It represents the average mass of an atom of that element. Each element not only has an abbreviation, it also has an atomic number. Now, This number is usually found in the top left corner. And to understand what this number means, we need to dig deeper into what makes up an atom. For a long time, atoms were thought to be uncuttable. But not so long ago, scientists found out more about the structure of the atoms. And they found a nucleus at their center. The nucleus is made up of tightly packed protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged particles, and neutrons have no charge. Also, the nucleus is surrounded by electrons, like a cloud orbiting the nucleus in a circular motion. Electrons have a negative charge. So, Protons and electrons have the same number in an atom, and that's why we say the atom is neutral, because the plus and minus cancel each other out. So connecting this information back to the periodic table, 
The atomic number of an element indicates how many protons are in that element's nucleus. And the beauty of atoms is that they can bond to form solids, liquids, and gases. You can think of atoms being like Lego blocks. You can join them together in many different ways in order to build different things. Atoms can be arranged and rearranged in order to create new substances. It's amazing to think that the concept of atoms was being explored thousands of years ago. Today, scientists are able to use the knowledge of atoms to explore our world in incredible ways. They use the periodic table as a powerful tool. A periodic table can serve as a sort of recipe book. The chart shows how elements relate to one another. So, where an element sits on the table tells a chemist how it may or may not interact with other ingredients or elements. These mighty building blocks of matter still have many mysteries to them waiting to be discovered. And I can't wait to tell you more about it in our next lessons.